All right, so I'm going to show how to replace the keyboard on this Dell Inspiron model 5575. So first thing you want to do is remove all the screws. So the three back here, they actually stay in place. You just unscrew them until they pop out and stop stop coming out further. Um, you do this all with a PH1 or a JIS1 screwdriver. All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, once you remove all those screws, you can flip it over, open it up slightly, and then here you'll see there's a gap. So you can use your fingernails or a pry tool. I used to use my fingernails. So I get my fingernails in there and then I push on the back with my thumb, just like that, okay? And then it pops out. You just go all the way around on the sides and then the just like that. Okay, once you get the front and the sides out the back where the hinges are you kind of go up lift it and then you kind of pull on this like this okay if it doesn't come out you can kind of like wiggle it around like that and it'll pop out there we go so there's the cover we'll set that aside all right so inside you can see there's actually a ssd in here um, i don't know if yours will come with an ssd but this is a two and a half inch sata SSD. You can put a regular hard drive too, but I don't recommend it. There's also a M.2 slot. I don't know if this supports um, NVMe, PCIe NVMe SSDs or if it's just for the regular ones. Oh, I forgot I already disconnected the keyboard. But um, the battery to remove it, let's see if I can show this. I'll actually take out the screws, but there's little wings here. So this, you can kind of grab it and wiggle it and you can pull the battery out like that. Um, if you can't, get a good grip on that oops um, you can actually remove the battery first and it'll make it a little easier so that way you have some room you can pull the slack away um, so I'll show you let's remove the battery connector here so the battery is held in with four screws so we just remove those four screws okay Okay. Keep in mind where the screws came from because they are different sizes and shapes you don't want to get them all mixed up Okay. And the battery, if you need to replace it, the model number is WDX0R. So I'll give a close up view of that. All right, remove the battery. I just go underneath this and then pull it up. Here you can see, oops, WDX0R. Okay, that's the model number. All right, so we'll set that aside. Okay, and then the, let me show the type of RAM here. So the type of RAM is, PC42666V, you can put whatever size you want as long as it's PC42666V, okay? All right, so I'm gonna leave the stick of RAM in there. To put it back, you just put it at an angle like that, make sure it's pushed in all the way, and then press it down. Okay, so we're gonna have to remove everything from this board to get the keyboard out. It looks like it's held in place with uh, melted plastic. These are one of the more painful repairs. I'm gonna have to use a USB um, printing pen to melt plastic in its place. All right, so anyways, we're gonna disconnect all these cables. The keyboard one is basically the same as these, so same idea, there's these little latches. You just flip them up, okay, just like that. Do this with all the cables, okay, just like that. All right, so we'll remove this cable, which is for the USB board and the CMOS battery here, okay. So just pull that out. Usually you'll like grab these little blue tabs and then you can pull them out. All right. Same thing with the trackpad cable here. Okay. If you can't reach the blue tab, then you kind of have to get underneath and then kind of pull it out. If you have some plier, or not pliers, some, let me grab my good tweezers, okay. So if you have some good tweezers, you can use those. Okay, you can go underneath, grab it, and then pull it out just like that. Keyboard, same idea. Then you got the speaker cable here. <clears throat> so the speaker one, just like the battery connector, you get the wings, and then you kind of just wiggle it and pull it just like that. Okay, the speakers, they don't have any screws. You can kind of just pull it up, but there are like little rubber things that hold it. I'm going to actually leave those in place. It's a little bit difficult to get these out, but there you go. It pops up like this, okay? So I'm going to leave, well actually, let me take this one out because that cable's slightly in the way. And then push this over and pull it up. Okay, so I'll take that out just like that. Alright, then you got the LCD LVDS cable here. 
Um, if you're going to be removing this, you want to press and hold the power button after disconnecting the battery because otherwise you can actually damage this connector or the board. So I'm going to press and hold the power button. Okay, do that for about 10 to 15 seconds. All right. Normally, the safest way is if you remove the battery and then press and hold the button first. Um, but yeah, if you know what you're doing, you're probably not going to have an issue. But if you wanted to be extra safe, you can remove the battery and then press and hold the battery before or the power button before you remove any other cables. Okay, so yeah, that's mostly important just for this cable. Okay, so pop up that tab, pull this one out, just like that. And then we'll guide this wire out of the way. Okay. And then we're going to take out the screws for the, well, I guess we have to remove everything. So let's remove the hard drive first. I don't know if there used to be another screw here because I only see one screw here and one screw here, but there normally should be four. So it's kind of strange that they only have two screws on here, but we'll just remove them. Okay. Once you remove the screws, you should be able to lift this up just like this. Okay, and then we can set that aside. Let's see here. Okay, just like that. Then this cable you want to pull up as well. There is an adhesive, so you kind of want to, to peel it up. You kind of want to keep the cable as flat as possible. So I kind of pull it towards myself as I peel it. Okay. So I can try and keep it flat like this. Okay. And then this one just has like some tape over it. You don't want to crease the cable too much. If you do, you can actually damage the cable. So you want to be careful if you do that and the CMOS battery loses connection, then your date and time on your clock is going to keep resetting itself. So be very careful with that. Okay. All right. So we're going to remove these two screws holding this board in place. And then we're going to remove the CMOS battery. Actually, I'll leave that in place because it looks like it's not covering. Well, it might be covering something, so I'm going to peel it up. Yeah, it's not covering anything. So technically, you could just unplug the battery and leave it, plug, leave it on there. But I disconnected it, okay, or I removed it from this. All right, so next we're going to have to remove the fan three screws holding it in place again try and keep all these screws in order I know there's a lot I just lay them out on my table the way that I take them out so that way I can tell where they go okay just like this all right and the fan connector is just like the speaker connector once you remove all three screws you can lift the fan up okay just like this be careful because it's slightly underneath the heat sink here. So you kind of want to lift the back first and then slide it backwards. Okay. And then to remove the fan, same thing. Just grab the little wings that stick out, wiggle it as you pull. And there we go. It's kind of dusty. So I'm going to have to clean this off, but I'll just clean it a little bit. This kind of dust looks like from like smoke cigarettes or fire or something. It's like a darker gray almost brownish okay so I'm just brushing the dust off okay there we go all right so we got all of that we're gonna have to pull up this hinge or I guess we'll have to pull up both hinge covers so we're gonna actually also remove the screen from this and there's the charge port connector here same thing I think there are the wings here just grab the wings and then just wiggle it as you pull back. Yep, just like that. And then you can pull that out. All right, then you got the wireless card. There's one screw here. Move that screw. It'll pop up. Then you can lift this up and you can slide this um, antenna protector thingy out. Okay, to remove the wireless antennas, you can leave it actually connected, but to remove them, go on the tail of the thing and then pull the tail up. I like to hold the wireless card down and then do that. Okay, just like this. Okay, to snap them back on, you just line it up and push them down. But anyways, that's how you remove the wireless card. It pops up like that and then you just pull it back. Okay. All right, I'm gonna move the wireless antennas out of the way. It does guide through this little slot down here. So make sure you put it back. 
Okay, to remove the hinges, what I like to do is I'll undo the screws a little bit first. Okay, there's a lot of screws. So there's three screws holding this hinge in place. So I like to undo them just slightly, okay. This one also has two screws holding it. They are holding on really strong, so they probably put some thread locker there. That's really good. Uh oh, this one's broken. So that's not good. This little screw is going to have a tough time coming out. Anyways, once you do that, what you do is you open the screen slightly. Okay, just like that. And then once the just stay up, you can let it back down. And when you do that, why are these screws so tight? Jeez. Okay, well, let's just, sorry, my arm's in the way. So just remove these screws all the way. Okay, just like that. And they do have arrows pointing to where some of the screws go to help you know where to put it back. I think this side is also broken because it's not coming out either. That's going to be a pain. Okay. Well, hopefully yours aren't broken like that, but this one, the screw thing mechanism is broken. So let's see if I can get them out. What you have to do is open the screen and then you let it drop down. And as you drop it down, the hinge will kind of pop open. But normally you can take this all the way out, but it looks like this stuff is broken. So I don't know how I'm going to remove these. I might have to just destroy the screws here. So, yeah, it's not coming out at all, I don't think. That's not good. I'm probably going to have to drill through and destroy those screws. Yeah, they're not coming out at all. So, I'm likely going to have to drill those screws out. I'm going to try and pry it up as I undo the screw. Sometimes that helps, but these screws were held in really tight. So I doubt, yeah, it's not coming out at all. Okay, so I'm going to have to actually drill through these screws. So I'm going to go get a drill and I'll be back. Okay, so I got a drill. So what we're going to do, I need to find a bit that's about the same size as the screw, the part that's threaded. So that way when I drill through, it'll just um, basically allow me to pull the top of the screw off. Okay. So we're going to go with this bit. So we got this, and we're going to try and drill this out, okay? Oh no, it's just spinning around in there, so I'm not sure how I'm going to get that out. The whole screw just spins around. Let's try this one. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do it. The screw just keeps spinning around. Um, I might have to use a special cutter tool. Hopefully you guys don't have this issue because if you do, you're pretty much going to be stuck with this. It's not coming out at all. Man. I can't pry it out. I can't. Let's see here. Can I somehow get this? underneath to put more pressure it doesn't want to come out at all so I'm not sure how I'm going to do this let's see this side is there also another metal piece holding it okay this side is just plastic so this one should just rip out actually I'm gonna unguide this cable here just like this okay be careful because there's the power button ribbon cable there and then move this aside so this one goes around this curve thing okay so now that I got the cable out of the way I'm gonna try and just rip this up 
Jeez, this one's stuck really strong in there. Oh, there is a piece of metal as well. So I'm not sure what to do for this. I might have to tell the customer that I can't remove it. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to remove that screw. It's permanently stuck in there. Okay, let me try one other thing. I'm going to try and heat this screw up, and hopefully that will melt the... Um, what do you call? Hopefully that will melt the uh, thread locker stuff good enough, because it seems... I don't know if it's thread locker or something else. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to heat this up. Okay, I don't know if it's too hot. No. Okay, now the thing's spinning extra loose. Let's see if I can pull this up as I twist it. It doesn't want to come out at all. Yeah, I don't know. This thing doesn't want to come out at all. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do this because they put some metal reinforcement thingies that I can't take it out. Come on. Okay, I'm going to try the thing to see if I can cut it, but the piece is too low, so I don't think I can actually cut this. Let me try. Yeah, I think the screw is too low that I won't be able to cut it. So I got these little end clipper things. Okay, let's see if I can grab underneath. It doesn't look like it. Nope. Yeah, it sits way too low. So I don't think I can get underneath. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. You need like some kind of saw or something. Um, I'm going to try some other tools real quick. Let's try with this flathead screwdriver. Sorry, this is gonna end up being a fail video. <laughs> Looks like, I mean, at least I did show a little bit of how to disassemble, but um, as far as getting the keyboard out, it looks like it's going to be a fail. Okay, let's see if I can pry this side of the screw up slightly. Okay. I don't think that's enough for me to get this tool underneath. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see if I can snip this off. Kind of, it just bent it up, <laughs> but I think that's enough that I can snip the whole thing off. Uh oh. Uh, let's pry this up some more. Mm, I can pry. Let's see if I use the screwdriver now to pry it and destroy that screw. Jeez, I can't get it out at all. If you're stuck in this situation, I don't know what to tell you. This is very difficult to remove. And I don't think you'd be able to get this out. I don't know what else you can use to do this. Come on, screw. Okay, well, maybe since I ripped off that much, I can pull this up and it will snap off. Let's just give it a shot. Hold this down as I pry it up. <sighs> nope, it still doesn't come up. Jeez, it's going to break the plastic there. Yep, I don't know what to tell you. 
This one looks like it's screwed. There's no hope. Let me try with some pliers. Okay. Maybe the pliers, I can smash it. Oh, nope. I mean, I'm grabbing it, but... Can I snap it in half somehow? If I squeeze it hard enough... just keeps turning itself. Okay, let's try this. It's kind of... Kind of not really... Oh, there we go. Okay, now I should be able to lift this up. I don't know how I'm going to do the other side, but... At least this side. Okay, let's see if I can snip that off now. Okay. Alright, come on. Let's open this up and see. Come on, there we go. Okay, so now we got this screw mechanism up. I'm gonna actually cut this piece off because there's no way I can do anything with that now. Actually, what you can do, you can, you should be able to bend this metal piece up, but it's like stuck in there. So I'm gonna have to cut this off. Okay, oops. Let's see if I can cut this off. There we go, at least some of it. Yeah, I can't remove that piece, it's permanently stuck in there. I don't know what to do about that. Okay, I'm gonna grab this, and then now that the other piece is off, I can actually bend it upwards. Can I push it through? Let's bend this metal piece up and pull it out. Okay, so we got that up. Now I'm going to try and pull this piece out of here. There we go. Perfect. So, took that out. If I want, I can actually um, epoxy a new screw in there. Or not a screw, a new... Um, what do you call? Let me clean that up a little bit. Whatever that bolt, brass bolt thingy is. Okay. So I'm going to pull out the junk from there. I don't know how I'm going to do this on the other side, though. The other side, there's... It won't come up even a tiny bit, so... Let's see. Okay, so we got that out. I'm going to actually get a replacement screw, like a short one, just to put there. then what I want to do is fill that little gap with epoxy so I'll do that actually later but just to make sure I can get that out let's see if I can get the other side out because if I can't get the other side out then there's no point continuing this so let's see how am I going to remove that that's gonna be a pain um, Switch back to my regular one. Alright. So, how am I going to do this? Let's see. I'm going to open up the screen slightly again. And while I'm kind of pulling this down, okay, I'm going to try and pry, get this screw out. Yeah, I don't think I'm even getting slight, a slight gap on this one, so I'm not sure how to do this. Normally I would use the tool and get it slightly in and that will allow me to pry that up but this doesn't want to come up at all so I can't even get my thinnest pry tool in there in that gap. Okay 
I guess I do have to just keep trying the drill. What I'm gonna do is not insert the drill, like put downward force so it doesn't spin the screw around. I'm just gonna lightly hit it. Actually, it's at the high speed now. There we go. I don't know if that's just damaging my drill bit. Okay, it's semi-working. I'm going to try a bigger drill bit. I hope I'm not just destroying my drill bits. Okay, let's get a... Oops. Let's get a larger one. Maybe I need a way to like hold that screw in place while I drill it. I can maybe use my pliers to do that. I'm going to try holding this down and then drilling it. Let's see if I can use my pliers to hold this in place. Oh, I can't even grab that. Oh, there we go. Perfect. There we go, that worked. Okay, so the trick is use pliers, hold onto the screw, and then drill it out. Instead, I think I damaged my other drill bit for nothing. Okay. All right, so I think I got it. That's probably the best way. Let's put my drill bits away, okay. Okay, so I'm going to put my drill away. I'm going to clean up all the metal flakes and dust because you don't want to leave that all over your work area because then you can short something out. I'm going to put these tools away and I'll see you in a bit. I'm going to clean out all this metal flakes. All right, I'm back, so let's continue this. Now we should be able to lift this hinge up. There we go. I don't know if I should completely rip this one out like the other one but um okay so you got the uh, DC charge port jack here if you want you can remove that there's one screw and then you can pull that thing up I'm gonna leave it they coiled that in place actually I might have to remove it okay let me remove that as well okay so I'll remove this screw okay then you can lift this up just guide it out from there, okay? Just like that. And then we'll set it there, okay. Wireless antennas, oh, let's remove the whole thing. So we'll unroute that from there, okay? And then we're gonna remove the whole screen assembly. Just like this, lift it up, you can slide that out, make sure you don't get the cables caught on anything, and then we'll take that out and set it aside. Alright, set it somewhere safe. You don't want it to drop and get damaged. Okay, so now we're going to disconnect the or remove the power button board. So there's one screw here. It looks like we do have to switch to a pH zero. Okay, so let's switch to a pH zero bit. Alright, and we'll take this screw out. All right, set that down, and then we're gonna have to lift this up and peel, actually we have to peel this out first because they actually melted that on top. I don't know why they did it that way. Okay, so just peel this adhesive up. There we go. Once you peel that adhesive off, you can lift this board up from this side because there is a clip on the other side. Lift it up here and kind of work it to pull it out. Oh, it's kind of stuck. I guess we have to like swing it outwards. It's stuck in here. Kind of strange. Come on, there we go. All right, so it gets caught on the bigger part where the screw goes. Then peel this up slowly. Again, you don't want to bend the cable too much so just be careful okay and then we'll flip up the latch for that connector as well all right peel that up 
And there we go. So we got the power button board out. All right, now to get the motherboard out, it looks like there's just one more screw. Okay, so let's take out that one screw. Well, I was worried that screw was stuck too. Okay, so remove that screw. And hopefully this will come up. I don't know if there's any other hidden screws. Okay, that's it. So we got the motherboard out. CPU and GPU are soldered to the board. You can't do anything with it, but there we go. Okay, so if something happens to your motherboard, you'll have to end up replacing it. I'm gonna put it in one of these anti-static bags. Okay, let's see here. Oh, oh, it's stuck to it. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put the board in one of these anti-static bags. You probably won't have one of these, so you just put it somewhere that doesn't get static. I think cardboard works well. So we'll set that aside as well with the screen. Okay. Now we're going to have to remove this plastic thing. So these plastic things are quite a bit of a pain to remove. Um, I'm gonna try some other methods to remove it. Let's see that I haven't done before. Hopefully I can find an easier way to do it, but I'm kind of doubting it. Um, I don't know if I can, oh, I guess this metal plate will come up with the rest of the keyboard thing. So I'll remove this piece and then add a new one as well once I get that out. Okay, um, it looks like I'm going to remove the speaker because they put this small board here. So I'm going to take the speaker out completely. Okay, just, oops, it's not in view, just guide the wire out. Okay, be gentle with it, you don't want to break the speaker cable. Just like this. Okay, alright. And then this speaker also comes up, you just lift it straight up. Okay, just like that, and we'll set that aside as well. Okay, I'm running out of places to put junk. Okay, now that's okay, we can leave that. You wanna peel up this cable. They stuck it down with an adhesive. Okay, all right, so this metal plate, there's so many pieces here that we're gonna have to remove. Normally, if it has these little holes, I would use the drill. It would make it easier. You can also use a razor blade to cut these pieces out. So let me see if I can show you. If you get a razor blade, okay. And then you basically want to cut these plastic pieces out. So doing it this way is probably going to be a huge pain. Um, I don't know if you can find another tool. I mean, most people probably just won't won't do this kind of upgrade so yeah but you can use this and then you can kind of as you wiggle it it'll slowly cut through the plastic and then just like that okay so you can do it that way and then you can cut each one of these out that's going to be a huge pain um, you can also use a drill or I don't know what else if there's a tool that you can heat it that would be nice but um yeah okay so these ones with the holes I'm gonna actually use the drill I think it should be a lot easier so I'm gonna get my drill bit drill back okay and let's see this one I think I only need the smaller drill so let's try this okay let's see if I can do it this way I'm basically just going to drill out these circles. Yep, just like that. Yep, it's much easier. So I'm going to just drill these. I'm actually going to get a use a drill bit that's slightly bigger than the hole so I don't drill too far. Because now I have to fill like this whole gap with the um, melted plastic. So let's see if this one is better. It's like the same size, so I need one small, one slightly bigger. Um, I'm go even bigger than that one. Okay, hopefully this will work. There we go. All right. If not, I'll just have to use the smaller bit on all of them. Okay, let's do this. Yep. 
Perfect, that's what I want. So as I drill it, it actually just pulls the whole plastic piece out. Makes it so much easier. Okay, just like that. We're gonna do that for all of these bits. So once you get all of those out, you should be able to lift this up just like that, okay? But yeah, we're going to have to go and drill out all these plastic things, okay? It's going to be a pain. If you got a nice drill, then it makes it a bit easier. But yeah, it's gonna definitely going to be a pain. Alright. Just like that. Let's drill all these out. There we go. Maybe I should use a slightly larger drill bit. Some of these are melted weird, so I don't know if I'll be able to get them out, but we'll see. I think if I just drill each one a little bit enough, I can just rip the whole piece out and it will come out by itself. So, here we go. These are coming up. There we go. These tiny ones, I don't know how I'm going to do it because the drill bit's going to wander. Actually, I might have the perfect tool for this. I'll be back. I'm going to go grab that, and hopefully, or if I can find it, I'll be back with that. All right, I don't know if this will work, but I have this where it's like a sliding shaft. So hopefully I can keep it aligned over the thing and then drill it through. The only problem is this doesn't hold drill bits. It holds these. Um, actually, that might be perfect. Let's see. So I'm actually combining lots of tools from all different sets to make my job easier. Um, so I actually have these um, screw removal things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that in reverse. And then I can actually use this to hold it in place, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is line it up, drop that down. Hold that in place and run it in, run it in reverse. And hopefully, oh, it doesn't look like it's working. Yeah, it's semi working. These aren't made to drill through plastic, so it it works for making starter holes. So I'm gonna use this to make starter holes. I'm gonna use the smaller one so it's easier. And then once I have those starter holes, I can actually use the regular drill bit. So this will probably work really well for what I need, I hope. Okay, so I'm going to go through and do that with all of them. Okay, let's make some starter holes in all of these. That already has one. And actually, I can use it just to hold on to this. So that's nice. So I can guide it better as I drill through. And it's actually working to remove these things too. So I actually might not need to drill a lot of them. Okay, oops. So if you're wondering um, what these things are that I'm using, this one's like a Montana something, I don't know. And then this is from the iFixit adapter. Technically, I don't need this adapter because I can just put it straight through. So maybe I should just use the bit directly. Let's try that because I don't need the... That way you don't need all these extra tools. So if you're going to attempt this, this is the one of the sets that I bought that has a whole bunch of bits in it. It's not as good quality as the, um, oops. Let's see if I can just, no, actually, how will I do that? Okay. I guess we just have to use a smaller bit to start. Okay. So basically you can use, you can do this with the drill bits. You just need a smaller bit to start. So that way it doesn't slip around so much, but Nope, even that's slipping. Okay, I'm going to have to use that tool. Looks like... 
Okay, because this one helps me hold it better. So, I mean, you can do it with the drill. It'll just be a lot harder. So I'm going to, since I have these tools to make my life easier, I'm going to do that. Okay. Basically, I'm just going to drill out all these pieces. Oops. Yeah, it helps a little, but not enough. Some of these are... Okay. Some of these cause it to wander even if I use that. Okay, so there's two screws here that we're going to remove. Um, I think you have to use a PH1 for that. Don't use the PH0 or you'll strip those screws out. Very important. Okay. All right, this is coming out. There's another screw up here. Okay, so make sure that you remove this metal plate with just those screws. There's no melted plastic holding this in place. There are these adhesive tape things that are holding it down, so you kind of have to peel it up. Okay, but yeah, other than that, there's no melted plastic holding that. There's some melted plastic holding this piece, and this piece is like a rectangle, so we're going to have to actually use the razor to cut that. All right. Like that. Go. Set that aside. All right. Let's see how far are we going, coming along with this. Come on. Why can't I get underneath to lift it up? Don't tell me they melted this metal piece onto that as well or something. It looks like this metal piece might also be part of that. But, okay, we're gonna keep drilling these things out. Oops. Yeah, I'm, let me try using the smaller drill bit, just a regular drill bit. Here. Wait, yeah. All right. I'm going to use a smaller drill bit because that should grip into the plastic better when I start the drill. Then you don't need all these special tools to do all this kind of stuff. So hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on like how I think when I'm working on all these things. Okay, I'm going to use the tiniest bit first. This might make it easier than using that because that other one's not as sharp. The only thing is I don't have a thing to hold on to, so. Oh yeah, this is much easier. So if you have a nice um, small drill bit that's sharp enough, it drills through this much easier. So I would recommend using that. See how easy it does that? Maybe I'll just leave all the dirt on there because I'm gonna have to, or not the dirt, but the drilled out stuff because I'm going to have to clean it later anyways. Oh, that one actually even came out completely. Oh, some of these come out completely when I drill it, even with the tiny one. That's nice. Uh-oh, this one wandered too much. This one's all breaking. I'm probably gonna have to use the razor blade for that. Where'd my razor blade go? Oh. Only problem is it's kind of sunk in, so it's hard to get to that, but there we go. All right, let's draw out this one. Okay, let's see, do I need 
to. Yeah, this small drill bit works better than the other thing, so. Sorry if my head's getting in the way. I need to remove. Let me redo these small ones. Someone's moving all over the place. I don't know. Let's try going at an angle. Okay. Let's see. Am I missing any? I'm going to start removing the plastic things now, and then I'll go over and check which ones I missed. <clears throat> and you can see how much of a pain this kind of repair is. So most people actually don't do this kind of repair. They will just replace the whole top assembly. Oops. Not that plastic, okay. This on the adhesive got in the way a little bit. destroyed here on the side. That one I have to use the razor blade. Maybe I need a slightly bigger bit. It keeps grabbing into the metal. Okay. On some of these.
a small bit on that one. Oh, I need to remove those two. Okay. Switch up to the bigger bit. So many. A lot of these are just partially removing, so it's I have to kind of like tear it up some more. Okay. There's all these tiny ones. it up now. Is something still holding it down? Is this one semi holding it down? Let's lift this up. There's still a few small ones I need to remove. Let's switch back. That is so much work for a keyboard. Switch the larger one again. any other than this tiny one here. Let's see if I can... Oh, that worked. Okay. Alright, let's see. Can I lift this? Is there still something holding it down? Okay, this middle plate is coming on. Maybe it's just, is it just that adhesive holding it down? Okay, let's see, I'm gonna peel up that adhesive here that's on the trackpad. This adhesive's kind of a pain to remove. Just peel it back. Just like that. Alright, let's see. Can we lift it up? Feels like there's still something holding it down. Okay, this one I didn't get completely, but I don't think that's holding it down. What is holding this down? Am I missing something? I must not be seeing something. Okay. Uh, it's most, oh, here we go. I'm missing these two down here. So 
so it actually helps to spin the drill faster so that way it spins fast enough to get caught on the okay it looks like this is actually holding onto this other metal plate I don't know what they're using to hold onto it but I think it's held in because it's not coming up oh man so I do have to take this whole piece out as well all right, so PH0 screwdriver. We do have to remove this other screw here that's holding this button in place. Let's remove that screw. And then take the plastic button out, just like that. And then it looks like we're gonna have to drill through all this stuff as well. Or I'm going to have to use a razor blade to cut these and then use the drill for these other ones. Okay. Oops, I have to drill faster so I don't drill through the metal. There we go. Sorry if I'm going out of view. these up so hopefully the whole thing will come up we just have to cut these four with the razor blade if we can okay just like that one two this video is getting to be too long I might have to do a part two so after I remove the keyboard I think I'm gonna do a part two of this video these pieces off just like that all right hopefully now we can lift the whole not the keyboard but the keyboard panel out okay guide the wire through there we go so this is one piece it looks like I'm gonna have to take this outside and then get all this loose plastic out but here you can see that out. We did drill through the keyboard somewhat, but this keyboard's dead anyway, so it's fine. Okay. <clears throat> did I miss any plastic holding the keyboard down? Doesn't look like it. So just lift this whole thing off, just like that. There we go. So in part two, I'm gonna put a new keyboard, melt plastic into place, and then will be good to go. Um, you do have to bend this cable the same way or fold it in the same spots. But other than that, um, that's all there is to remove it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in part two. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, help others find my videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I'm also gonna put back this little bolt on both sides. All right, let's actually pull this one out as well. That one should come out. Let's see here, I should be able to pull this out with some pliers. It was loose, so I don't know why. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.